So Eric is skating with us as a non-roster guy. Okay. So we're he's skating with us, staying with us while we try to navigate what we can do. Obviously, we're up against the cap, and we're trying to figure out a way to manage things. Um, we'd like to try to to get something done, but you know our hands are tied. You know both by cap and and then you know naturally then by roster space. So. Um, but the, he's able to, to skate with us as a non-roster player. And uh, there's a guy named Lucas Pisa who did it previously. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just continue to, to do our best there and, and see what happens. Um, Aaron Eckblad's going to go on LTI. So that's 10 games and, and 24 days, yeah, yes. right? So um, that's the minimum threshold. So he'll be out that long. At a minimum. Would you be able to have 21 guys in the roster now? Yeah, you can. Well, it depends. It depends on the amount of money that they make. So, if, so you will get uh, relief, if you will, up to. There's a formula, but in this instance, it's pretty much up to the cap hit that Aaron would have. Okay. So, so if you had a 10 million dollar guy, you couldn't do that. No, it's not the 850. The 850 is if you are going to have an overage not utilizing the LTI space. Okay. Well, th so. because there's two guys now and only Ekblad went out. Correct. Correct. This is different than the scenario where you have you're at the cap, you don't you're not utilizing LTI to do it, but you're stuck, right? right? Where you just continue to have injuries. So it's And that was why we had to dress 19 the other night. Well, you play one game. Sorry. No, I interrupted please, you. Don't. Okay. You play you you uh, you the rules direct that you play one game with 19, and then you can you get, the relief. get back. Exactly. You get the relief, get back to 20 uh, with a player who makes 850 or less. So moving forward, it's just kind of playing the result. Like, obviously, you wouldn't want Ekblad to be injured ever. But because no. you get that relief, at least it gives you a little bit more under the belt to not have to go through 19 guys again. Right. Until and unless. And, and uh, yeah, we've. We'll take Aaron back, <laughs> but but yeah, ex you're you're 100 percent right. Bill, what's the what's the level of concern for him? Well, I'm not happy about it, and obviously we're concerned for him as a person first. But uh, I mean, he'll be back. It's not a season-ending thing, or um, and we have every every reason to believe he'll be he'll be back at 100 percent. And this is something that just happens in the normal course. Bill, it's been a while since you played LTI. Anthony would be player. Uh, where's he tracking? Right? He's tracking as uh, as planned. I think uh, it's a December, January type situation, and those you know you can't don't hold me to it as as far as the the progress that he makes. But he he's pretty diligent. He's working hard, and um, uh, you know having a, a Achilles myself, um, uh, I don't think I, I went as quickly as he did. But it you know it can change. So hopefully it's, it's sooner rather than later. Looking at the team itself, you've seen them for three games now. Just early impressions of how, you know, how to look out there. Um, I, I love the structure, and uh, I love the compete that our team showed game in and game out. I, uh, you know, after the Boston game, we were so happy with the way everybody came together at the end and just gave everything they had. We were down to 4D. They were working their tails off, and it seemed like seemed like we ran out of time more than anything else. And um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's been a short time, you know, but you've had a chance to go through camp and, and see a few games, Matthew Kachuk around the group. What can you say about the impact that he's made, not only off the ice, but or on the ice, but also off the ice? Yeah, I mean, he's, um, he's if you get to spend any time with him, he's, uh, he's about as advertised, right? He's a lot of energy and he's a, He's a he's a kind guy. Um, it gets along with everyone. He's a very nice person. Um, he's playing. You know, I, I really like him with Benny there. They have a lot of energy on their line, a lot of speed, um, a lot of physicality, and uh, he's he's been a great fit. Speaking about Duclair coming back and the cap issues, how do you how do you plan for something like that? Because you know you're going to have to bring him back and make space for that. Mm -hmm. And with you know how tight it's been right now, like just being in your position, like. How do you have those contingencies? It, it's something that you know we, I guess, strategize is the word every day, and we have 
contingency plans and we, you know, we think about certain opportunities that have presented themselves or could represent themselves or that we could create to facilitate certain moves that we can do, uh, you know, to prepare for things like that. You've so. kind of had an easy go for the first couple of years, and this is kind of a real hard challenge to be managing. That, was, that was easy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean no, in terms really. of the, I'm like, out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, in terms of you haven't had to deal with these, these level of issues where you're so tight against the cap and the margins and the assets and whatnot, do you kind of relish this challenge? Um, so, like you were just saying, thinking of all those plans. Are you no. contemplating the check? Uh, contemplating give me space. Okay. I'll take the. No, um, no I mean, it's. Not, I mean, it's. I much prefer to have the, the, the luxury of the space, and then the, and and. Um, but it, it it is what it is, and and we're happy with our group and our, our. It's a great team, um, it's, uh, and it's. They're having fun. They're working hard. I think the fans are going to appreciate the effort, and uh, and I think they can do great things. Do you know the timeline on Ekblad's injury, and is that going to open up some more uh, room to make moves to kind of fill in that void? Uh, I'm not. I don't know the timeline specifically. I mean, I, it's it's there hasn't been enough time yet to actually get that. Um, I don't anticipate you know an LTI space move coming from this particular instance. With this, the, this is three years in a row when Aaron's had to deal with something. Yeah. How how is he equipped mentally for for that? Because at a certain point, when guys just start to, get, start to get to rehab and a lot. How have you talked to him about what the challenge of two years is going to be like for him? Or is this to, just to be honest, this guy? I, I could have talked to him, but by the time I got to talk to him, he was working out. Um, I can't make it up. So he's about as mentally strong a person as, as there is. So I'm sure he's, he's angry and, and sad, too. I mean, he's human. But he's a pretty strong guy, and um, you know, my understanding of it is it's something that it's, it's not if, it's when. And he'll come back, and he's... Here we go. So these things happen, and he's a resilient guy. And, um, you know, he's a huge part of our team and will continue to be, e even when he's not on the ice. So he's a. Do you, do you allow yourself to go to the place where if something's going to happen, it may as well happen now? Um, yeah, I think I'd say it differently. And in the discussions that we had, it's, well, isn't this maybe an opportunity now? Maybe we can see what some other guys can do, you know, if given some more ice time and some opportunity, and may, you know, maybe maybe some good things come. So, there's, you know, maybe there's always that silver lining. So, yeah, that's a that's a great point. No, uh, Gary Bettman talked about the cap maybe going up four million dollars next Today? year. Today, <laughs> <laughs> not next year, but uh, maybe next year. I was just wondering if just kind of how you would think does that process into your thinking about decisions. This year at all, knowing that there's maybe an extra four million coming on board next year. Um, yeah, it would of course, right? Mm -hmm. And um, any time then, once you get the certainty that you knew, certainly with regard to player personnel moves, you could think about well, maybe if I there's a guy that I otherwise couldn't get, or it, it could certainly come into some some player personnel decisions. Bill, obviously, Paul's been around for several months now since being hired. Just how has that relationship between you and him evolved, especially now that we're, we're playing games and we're in that grind? It's, he's been wonderful to work with. Um, uh, very, uh, I, think, I think we have a real solid back and forth um, dialogue and um, very open-minded, not afraid to, to voice his opinion um, and, and be critical of my opinions when, when he feels that way. In a, in a real positive and uh, in a healthy in a healthy way, and I th I think it's been great. You know, you probably have to ask him, but um, no, it's been great. I've learned a ton, and um, yeah, no, it's it's been it's been everything's been really positive. It's it's been great great to work with. Do you anticipate having any problems spending that four million? <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to spend it just to spend it. You know, like <laughs> it's, honestly, like it's. 
but um, we, we are going to have some money next year from some of the some of the dollars already on our cap that will go away. So, yeah, we'll see. But um, we got to worry about <laughs> tomorrow. If anybody has a buck fifty to loan us, we'll be. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a great question. Um, you know, pretty close. There, there. You know, you see, you see the level of compete. I think for me, they're playing fast. They're, 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 it's. I saw someone. I think it was a coach that said, "We're we're just, we're not putting snow tires on a Maserati or something like that. We're just learning how to drive in the rain." And that it seems to be that, that tempo, the speed. But we're, they're playing hard. They're playing smart. Um, and it's three games in. Right? So there's still so much to be learned. There's so much collectively, maybe not even where they have to learn anything, but just they have to execute, play together, it, it just get it right. And um, it's exciting. So there are names on this team that are obviously going to get a lot of attention, a guy like Alexander Barkov. There are some guys, too, that I think of Gustav Forslund in particular, maybe last year one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. A guy like that going to get some increased responsibility and opportunity. What kind of opportunity do you see from maybe a guy like Forslund and, and the potential that he has to grow this year? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, it seems like every year it's, he, his role keeps growing and growing and he keeps taking on more and, and, and excelling. So, uh, you know, now he's going to get even more ice time and, and more responsibility. And, and that goal the other night, it was, you know, we needed it and he, boom. You know, and uh, he's his personality. He's a kind of an understated guy, and but he, when it's time to play, he shows up, and he just keeps getting better and better. And uh, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I was real happy, happy for him. And um, it's great. It, we need it. You know, so. Another guy that you picked up similarly to Forsling this year was Josh Mahora. We haven't had a chance to mm -hmm. ask you about him. So, what did you see in him that led you to want to claim him, put him on the roster, knowing that he's in a be playing a pretty significant role. So he was a guy that, that our scouts had ID'd that, you know, he can skate pretty well. He's a bigger guy. He can move a puck. And I thought, well, kind of fits into what we're trying to do, right? Get it, move it, join the play. And that was the, the ilk of the type of player that we thought would, would fit in. Um, and, you know, when you grab guys on waivers, there's, there's no cost. So what, given, given, you know, our asset pool, given where we were, it was, that's kind of how we're going to have to approach things for a while. I wanted to backtrack to Forsling for a second. I mean, with Ekblad out, Mackenzie Weger in Calgary, he's, he looks like he's the guy for the time being. With Ekblad on LCIR, do you believe that he can be the guy on this defense? Well, I think for, for the Florida Panthers, we're going to have to win as a team, right? Everything we do is going to be as a team. And even, even last year in the regular season, our regular season success, we had plenty of individuals who excelled, but we were a team. And that's where our success is going to come from the pack. Um, do I think there's another level in, in uh, force? Yeah, I do. So I think the answer to your question is yes. And I think that um, our, our success is going to come from our group. Uh, with with the going back to the cap question and your contingency plans, and when it comes to when it comes to the cap going up, how do you approach whenever you want to acquire a player, whether waiting for the trade deadline with all the assets shot out the previous years versus waiting of, until free agency of next year? I don't know what you mean. Uh, what how how do you process whether to do it or not? Oh well. It, it, it's going to be a function of, A, what you have. Mm -hmm. B, um, then you'll do right the cost benefit like you would in any other equation. What do I have to spend? What's it worth? What does it project to be worth? What, what can I replace the cost of what I spent? Okay. Um, what, it, what is the likelihood of my spending resulting in the yield that I'm hoping for? Um, what other factors weigh in, for example, in our last trade. It, there's so many parts of that equation, right? And then if you don't have any money, well, it doesn't matter. Okay? If you don't have any space, it doesn't matter. 
if you don't have the assets available to fit the particular need that you're trying to fill, it doesn't matter. So it, there's so many equations that I couldn't, I couldn't give you one. Yeah. But, and then in the summertime, it's a little bit different because it's really just cash cap and then what your needs are and can this particular asset fill that need. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you.